Hello folks, so welcome to my review of One Piece chapter 1078 and what I can honestly say thus far is probably my favourite chapter of the year thus far and I'll go over as to why that is by the end but let's get right into it with a couple page the theme of the chapter is progression and we've got some progression hopefully we get a finale to this with the Gem 66 cover story with Caesar and Judge making up after realising the common bond between the hatred and Stagapunk I don't know what this is going to lead into a mad reunion of the of the former mad scientist group now we saw Dufeld not too long ago with the ship with mads on it so i don't know if they're going to bump into him but judge and caesar clown seem to be making up real quick we got hg in the background they got radio on the other side just like sighing because there has to be something that comes out of this maybe they run into sanji again i don't know otherwise why why did i spend all this time hyping up this cover story and then escaping Hockey Allen, that should have been enough. So hopefully this will be it. We start off with the chapter with Stussy, communication with Zephyrium Zed tomorrow, or Clone Zed tomorrow. Also, I find it very interesting that Jinbei was there, which I'll go over in a minute. But basically, Stussy giving Zed tomorrow the lowdown of the plan of invading a head island with the Marines coming in with a fleet of ships. So, so Stussy says, for one... The Doctor not only continued to continue the scholars for bid research, so obviously the research of O'Hara was continued on through, through Vega Punk, because obviously we got that first, we got that re revealed in chapter 1066 with his connection. So second, unlike O'Hara, Ega actually has a formidable combat de defense. I, I like this because Sentinel is being told, uh, basically being told, this, hey, you better keep your eyes out because this, the Navy's on their way. They're going to try to repeat history with similar what they did with O'Hara. So they make the smart decision to like get all the residents that are on Egghead Island away and evacuate. Things really escalate and go down even worse than O'Hara because it's been described that way for like chapters on end now. And we even got a tease about what's to come in this chapter as well. But we go over to the lab where Zephyr and Bo Hancock and I, I said this in the last review. I expected Frankie to still be mobile because obviously it cut away and we just saw Usopp in love I still have a problem with that with Usopp being bitched out with the way he is because he's so much cap he's capable of so much more Zephyrium Boa Hancock or Zephyrium Snake in codename notices Pythagoras the head of Pythagoras who survived one explosion I guess could not survive this so Zephyrium Boa Hancock pulls a perfect cell and crushes it it looked like he crushed his head but if you look so Frankie's freak, freaking out because like, don't do that. There's an explosion appears, and if you look at the way, so Zephyr Boa Hancock or Zephyr Snake, however you want to pronounce it as, the way she's positioned, it looks like the explosion is coming from behind her because you can see the wings on the opposite side of the way she's facing. So that explosion is coming from the opposite direction, and if you look at the way that where Pythagoras was standing, it was right in front of her. So obviously that explosion, that explosion is coming from behind. Uh, so I don't know who that is or what that is. It could be Frankie. It immediately cuts again after an explosion, which caused all this. It cuts to an explosion. And then we go to the second floor, which this might actually be one of my favorite parts of the entire chapter. So we see Robin, Chopper and Atlas. And they're going over about the, first off, this, scene just highlights why Robin is the smartest member of the Straw Hat crew because for two reasons. Number one, she's already figured out because of Nami screaming that Sanji will, or there's somebody on the crew that will go to her defense no matter what. So obviously talking about Sanji, so I'm like, I like how Robin's intuitive about that. But more importantly, Robin goes over, oh, because there's back fights going on all over the place and everyone's been pinned down, this may actually be a distraction to lure everybody away from the fact that Vegapunk's the actual target and, and maybe the one in danger. So it's a distraction, and I like Robin figures that out. So that, it looks like they're going to go to where Vegapunk is, because I'm guessing Atlas brings up, that reminds me, there's a room that's sealed off for now, so where else could they go but except the place that Vegapunk has been captive with these assailants that we finally get revealed. We go to the third floor where Nami is actually getting upset over Edison. And I like this because at the beginning, Nami was actually gleaming over the thought of taking the treasure of, of Stella, or in this case, Vegapunk. But now she's like concerned about Edison, so I like that. But also, Brock is in soul form because he's completely, his body's on the floor and we see his soul. 
So Brooks also going out to scout for Vegapunk, so he could also run into the assailant as well. So I like there's many possibilities with this chapter. But here's the thing, so Zephyrim Jinbei versus Sanji is interesting in its own way. But Sanji doesn't really fight back, he just tanks Zephyr and Jinbei's attack and gives up, oh, don't be surprised, it's the power of love. We go over to the other two members of the Monster Trio with Luffy and Zoro. And this is where Robin's words about uh, this being a distraction may play a role bit because this whole sequence with them attacking Kuma, they completely lose sight of Zephyr and Mihawk, who's already dipped. He's gone. And uh, so I don't know where he's gone to. He may have gone to where he may go to intercept either Robin and Atlas and Chopper, or maybe even Stussy and Jinbei, because they could be heading that way, direction too. Brock in soul form is heading that way too, but I don't know if Zephyr and Mihawk, unless he has observation arc, he's able to detect that. So that's going to be very interesting. Doesn't matter because Zoro gives chase and actually goes after him. And also, Kaku goes with him because Luffy, well, first off, Luffy calls him Usopp, which is hilarious because obviously it's a callback to Water 7. So we're going to get two individual team ups with a member of CP0 teaming up with a member of the Straw Hats. In this case, Kaku's going off the team up with Zoro to take on Zephyr and Mihawk. Or, um, I kind of want to see that one on one, but I think eventually we're going to get that rematch anyway. I think this is foreshadowing for that. Then we got the individual team up of Luffy and Rob Lucci against Zephyr and B Kuma, which I'm sure is done by design because obviously Luffy and has a connection with Barney, so that's not done by the accident. But then, but then Lucci's kind of coaching Luffy not to like use your head a little bit because that's not going to work. And speaking of Barney, the very next scene is we see Oda hyping up this event that's going to take place tomorrow. At the conclusion of Vegeta Island, I'm assuming, with Vegapunk's escape, or at least the interception of a Vegapunk's escape, we don't know how things are going to play out, but Oda's hyping you up for that. So, But in the meantime, you see panels of where Barney sitting alone, crying, outside the memory pod bubble that she was looking into the last time we saw her, and she's just crying. There's no dialogue, which I get into, that's a key factor. But then it cuts to, like, Mary Jose. So this took place three months prior to what's going on right now with Egghead Island. So they already had suspicions that Vegapunk was like the researching the Void Century. Obviously, that's a no-no with the world government. So we get the other groups that got captured. Did they get now? I find it very interesting. They did get, they got captured but didn't get killed along with Vegapunk. So we get the two, the groups of Cypherpole that disappeared without a trace. That were obviously detained, which Vegapunk did not know. We get the explanation for that. So they arrived asking questions. The government ships never returned, and as a result, he made the decision to eliminate Vegapunk with CP0 leading the charge. That was the mission. We know that because Rob Lucci said it himself. But this is and this is the this is the key part of the sequence. The five elders, the Gorosei, kind of figured that Vegapunk would ha have some resistance, so. Number one, they, they already had Kizaru up leading the charge, on heading their way, just in case, that cut off. But they didn't count on, is the Shroud House running into Vegapunk, and Vegapunk asking for their help, now that Luffy's a Yonko. So that's why the Saturn, the member, one of the members that Gora say, now I kind of question why other members aren't there, but well, I, I guess Sam is the one that probably has the connection with Vegapunk, I'm assuming, because the, the last time we saw him, it's re he said it was regrettable he, it's come to this. But we see uh, panels of the members of the Navy. I think we even see Doll there, which she's also a member of the established S.W.O.R.D. organization, I should point out. So I don't know where that's going to lead. Also, is that X Drake, by the way? Or is that somebody else with that? I, I, it's been a while since we've seen S.W.O.R.D., the new members of S.W.O.R.D., so it looks kind of... Well, especially with the eye mask, kind of looks like X Drake. We know Kizaru and Saturn are coming. We know the warship, 100 warships are coming in their way. Sword's also a part of this, so I'm glad Oda tied that up. But then this is where the unexpected incident of the Emperor, the Straw, the Straw Hat Pirates, led by Luffy, are on their way. We see it, Akainu, and then a member of the Gorosei who is not there, with, with the long mustache, he gets triggered by this. They're going to have something up, else up their sleeve, I'm assuming. But then Oda's like, Caps this off by hyping up this chain of events to take place tomorrow and the outcome will shock the world. So there you go, Oda hyping you up.
that it's an inevitable war that's about to take place that's going to shake up the world, One Piece world. If what we had wasn't enough with Teach versus Law, now we got this. Which, by the way, we still need to find out what's going on with that. You get finally get the reveal of who the assailant is. After Shaka got shot in the head, I don't know if Shaka's down for the count for good. But we get the reveal who who it was who shot Shaka in the first place, and it's none other than York. I remember the Vega Punk Six now, and go figure, it's the one of the Vega Punk Six that actually turned out to be the laziest. Actually, was the assailant all along. Go figure, right? The Vega Punk kind of like asks York, well, "Why are you doing this?" Like, first, York responds, "It's because I want to be a celestial dragon." And then Vegapunk says something that's going to be foreshadowing because I think we're going to get his backstory. And it may even tie, tie into what happens with why he couldn't tell Barney about Kuma's secret. He's like, you know what's going what it's like on Mara Jose, you just know how vile they are. They've already visited them, but I was under the assumption that Vegapunk split away after this. And Vegapunk 6 still a thing when Vegapunk was affiliated with the Gorose back in Mara Jose. And that could be it because. Each member of the Vegapunk 6 make up each different personality traits of the original. Maybe she resembles Greed. And she's kind of like mocking Shaka. So like, you sound like Shaka. Well, he's not, not much anymore because he's dead. Which I feel like he's not. It's hard to keep track of all the Vega, all of us Vegapunks, right? So this was an inside job, obviously. And that's how the chapter ends. With York saying... Honestly, the world really doesn't need more than one of us. So she wants to be the original Vegapunk. So she wants to be her own without the original leading the charge. So this, so this may, in fact, tie into what Robin said a couple of chapters ago. With When she mentioned she saw Vegapunk, but she's like, oh no, it's just an organ. She goes over organoids. And I said I mentioned this scene for a reason, because I feel like it was kind of foreshadowing what might be going on here. With that clone, with so many clones going around, it just made the most sense. Now, a member of the Vegapunk 6 being the assailant is not a surprise. What is kind of revealing is that she wants to be a celestial dragon. That we kind of need Vegapunk's backstory for that to make sense. And that also, speaking of which, that scene with Robin talking about organoids, there's also a scene right before that exchanging dialogue when Atlas is talking to Chopper about being able to change appearances. I also mentioned that as well because i feel like that could also be what's going on here so it looks like both of them is has a tie-in with the assailant because it, it made the most sense because a member of vegapunk has authority over the zephyrium the only people that threw people off whack is the fact that york was actually turned to stone via zephyrium boa hancock so was that a clone of york all this time and because of Robin saying this might end up being a distraction. The main co cause of the threat being after Vegapunk. So we may get York versus Robin, which I wouldn't have a problem with, honestly. I also say after chapter 1066, I don't see Robin letting Vegap Vegapunk die just because of what, how much, how much of a connection he has with Elbaf and Monkey D Dragon. So I can definitely see Robin doing something to defend him. That would make sense. I said that then. Key factor here. We got, like I said, we got other groups for the Strats. That could show up too. Brock in his soul form could show up. Stussy and Jinbei. Plus Zoro is giving chase to Zephyr and Mihawk, which could lead him to where York and Vegapunk are. So yeah, that, that that's a possibility. So even though this chapter may seem simplistic to a lot of people, this chapter easily, in my opinion, is not only my favourite chapter of the year, I think it's the best chapter of the year that we've gotten so far. Because this chapter gives us so much progression after Oda milk this mystery assailant thing. Chapter 1074 is when this all got started with the explosion. It makes the most sense. Like, I think this has been long enough to like give us enough hooks and enough intrigue to like, okay, enough huge bits of information that we needed to get. But the two main things that needed needed to happen in this chapter is number one, we needed the reveal of Stella, and number two, we needed to see what happened with Barney. In order to get some progression. We got both of those. And we got the mystery assailant. Because as York was talking to Vegapunk. It was York that called Vegapunk Stella. Which I did say when that was first introduced. I said could that be an alias for the actual Vegapunk. So it turns out yeah. We got that plus the assailant revealed. So I can't ask for much more. But the main point here. Is the fact we saw Jory Barney. And she was not captured. Or she was not shot. Which kind of made makes me ask the question okay 
So if the it's the if the name of the game for the Gora say for York is to mean is to be the only Vegapunk out there, why hasn't she killed Vegapunk? Or is she just gonna to torture him until somebody shows up? Like the te- stereotypical villain. Because right now, that makes no sense because you have the opportunity to kill him, yet you captured him. You did and it's revealed that you did not attack a body. So that was that answers my other question. So when Vegapunk was snatched and attacked, because we know attacked because he had bruises and cuts, what happened with Barney? Was she left alone because nobody saw her? Looks like that's the case because otherwise Barney would have been attacked too and captured. Which is why I think more than ever, Barney is going to be the the key to the resolution to this whole thing. To like solve this problem. And I've been saying this for months. It's going to lead her to actually help out Luffy, but more importantly, Vegapunk too. The more we don't get anything of her backstory, the more it leads, like, Barney to, like, ally with Luffy even further because we kind of need that reveal of what she saw in Kuma's memories. We still haven't got that. In fact, when this whole mystery started, that was the last time we saw Barney. And in the same chapter where we got the assailant revealed, we see Barney. I don't think that's a coincidence at all. It was also kind of foreshadowed. Like I mentioned this in the last review just to remind everybody. But there was a scene where Vegapunk said, I wish I'd given it to you in the past. But he was having regrets about Kuma and the way that Barney ended up. Because not being able to tell her the truth. We need it. Like I said, we need that kind of revealed. And the longer that Oda holds this out, the harder it's going to be for Barney to separate herself from Luffy after this. Because we kind of need that reveal. And unless we see Kumra kind of reveal that himself, then she's going to want to stick it to the world government to, like, honor her father. That's why I feel this is going. And that's why I feel like we didn't get any dialogue from Barney, though we did get to see Barney, which is good. Because the way that Barney's been hyped up has been top-notch. And honestly, outside of Law, Zoro, and Luffy, Barney may end up being in the top four when it comes to, like, Supernova and what members of the worst generation. That's not saying a whole lot. Because we, there's still members of the worst generation we don't know about. But the way that Barney's been handled right now. I would go so far. You can put Barney in the top four. She may not be the strongest. Doesn't matter. She has, still has a broken ability. If given use. I've been saying this. I said this four years ago. I said this after the reverie. Because Barney was there. She could end up bump, bump into the, bumping into the straw hats. And to actually lay out what went down at the reverie. She could still do that. Because she has no ship. And... She kind of teased, Oda and Barney kind of teased it mid, at the beginning of the art, where she said, oh, I, I, I could give, give you load out of what, what went down with the reverie, but I, I'll keep it to myself for now, and I'll, I'll, I'll share it with you later. Definitely my favourite chapter of the year, because it's the first chapter where we've got some major progression, and we there's been a while since we got, we got teasers here and there, and listen, I like a good mystery novel, and Chapters of the next person. Dangle Rampa is an underrated gem of mine. When it comes to like the anime, when it comes to anime, I wish that I could have been twenty-four episodes, but that's a whole other topic. Before Oda has too much to juggle, and he's already teasing Elba for crying out loud. So what more? What more do you need me to say? Like he's already given us two teasers of Elba, a possibility of a chance kid fight, which by the way, now we know this incoming event is going to take place tomorrow. I think. At the conclusion of this arc, we don't know what really is going to go down. It's going to be some mad hype, I can tell you that. So, we don't know, and we don't even know if the Strauss are going to be a part of this. We don't know. Oda opened up the door with infinite possibilities. When it comes to, like, his statement, this legendary clash that was going to happen this year, this character is going to face this character? No way, I hope nobody dies. So that was T- the jump faster. Could this battle take place in this event that's going to happen with the Gorosei? And possibly Straw House, or at least Vegapunk, we don't know. I don't know. That's a possibility. And given the fact, it looks like Sword's going to be a part of this, so I don't know what that, what's gonna, that's going to lead to, but that's going to be very interesting. But the fact that Oda stated is going to lead to a shocking conclusion. Anything could happen. Oda's already teased Elba, so I don't know why that wouldn't be in, in the cards for the next arc. If if we weren't going to go there yet, if someone was going to get captured from the Straw Hats, dragged into... Mera Jose, which by the way feels like a end game type arc if you ask me just to, like do this again later on so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do it now and tease Elbaf here who knows how long if that if we actually get a rescue arc 
involved with the straw hearts and Oda's already teased Elba, so like, no, I don't see any I don't see any reason why he would do that. So yeah, I definitely like this chapter a lot. And it may lead into what I've been saying this entire time that Barney's gonna be the key to, to solve this whole thing and be the resolution to this problem. We could we could also possibly get York versus Robin, I'd be down with that, because of what was teased in this chapter, but oh, this chapter, like I said, may very seem may seem very simplistic, but it got a lot, give us a lot of progression that a lot of chapters this year haven't given us. That's all I can ask for. So that's gonna do it for you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Like the review if you did a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Subscribe, channel for one piece. Catch you guys later. Thanks, guys. Bye.